John Mason here with Hartford legendary community activist Ned Cole. Ned's life was recently featured in Andrew Carl's book, Free the Beaches, the story of Ned Cole in the battle for America's most exclusive shoreline. We're here in Barkham said with Ned talking to the man himself who 45 years ago led the way to open some of America's most exclusive beaches. Ned, thanks for allowing me in your home. Ned, well, say a few words and, and talk about uh, you know what you've been doing for the last few decades. Well, uh, basically the the book covers my work on the on the beaches. But what I'm into right now and have been since Pentecost 1990 is my calling as a prophet. Simple as that. And that, that didn't really get into the book. It, it got into my me being a, a devout Catholic and all that. And up to right now, today, it's clear to me that it's no longer just a thought. It's a fact that I am called to be a prophet. A prophet is without honor in his home area. So that's why one of the things I'd like to try to do is go down New York City and get that nickname changed to God City uh, from uh, the Big Apple. Big Apple is a symbol of original sin. I first thought that you know, Trump was the real problem. I, I, that was in my mind. But my mind is, I don't think he, 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 he is really. I think that a lot of most people think he is, but I don't. The real problem uh, is, is, is greed in America. Well, listen, we filmed you earlier this month, and, and we have those clips with us. Let's take a look. I think we talked about several topics that you'll yeah. explain about, and uh, let's take a look at those right now. My first question is your uh, biggest satisfaction from the book coming out, and of course, that's uh, The Beach Divide by Andrew Carl. Well, I think he did a great job, and I think he did a very uh, efficient job without, in other words, he, some of his own warmth came across. Because he, he had to ask some, some real good questions of people. And... Uh, also, uh, uh, it's the type of thing, you know, reading that type of thing that I'm going to savor that book a little bit, keep that in mind and, 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 and in my own life and bring up my children. And uh, that's an interesting scene right here right with that when I took on those drug dealers. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, Carl... He, he he tries to be as sensitive as he can to this woman, but I certainly wasn't, because she was the one who who was the head, uh, used the tenants, the tenants Association. The, 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 I mean that drug was wide open when I got out there, mm -hmm. and and I and 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 I was angry about it not only because it was it was, but it was hurting the kids that I was trying to help. It's hurting the families, and, and naturally the kids would go into drugs if, if unless it stopped. When you look back on the 70s, when you first got involved in trying to get access to the beach for everybody, 45 years later, what's your view of that whole situation? Well, one of the things I think... I mean, some people on those beaches, some white folks, uh, when the state police were brought in and they, they they were ready to tell us to put the kids back on the bus and go home and all that, some people on that beach said, no, they can be our guests. And those people, it took a lot of courage for those people to say that because some of them got a lot of flack uh, from their own neighbors. A lot of what we're talking about is gut liberalism versus head liberalism. And head liberalism is, it's easy to intellectualize and say you're a, a liberal, but you're not going to go out your own way to help other people. You're a liberal after things are okay for you. And, uh, 
and 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 then uh, one thing I value uh, in my career basically is I think one thing that helped me out great is is a high uh, priority on on courage, and I think I got that priority on courage from uh, the courage I've seen that poor people ha have had to have over the years. And also, uh, I got it from my Catholic religion. You basically have to understand what the Incarnation me means. And this means that God Almighty became human. And, and, and to pay, just even to try to comprehend that idea is it, it, you really got to delve into it, and, and, and not only that, the whole, you could see why the Pharisees and the scribes so much were against Christ, uh, uh, because, because uh, they were the establishment, and, and and they were the power, and he he bucked all that. The very fact he was born in a stable. Well, one picture I get a lot of satisfaction is that of St. Ignatius Loyola, well, uh, the founder of the Jesuits, and that picture's right over there. And uh, and one of the things that I think helps the Catholic Church a lot is that they have orders that are under a bishop, and they have orders that, that so the bishop sort of leaves alone because they're accountable to their own superior. Who, so you've had, to, I mean, you think of the Franciscans and the Benedictines and, and, and so many and so many religious orders. Uh, how there has to be a great fellowship among them, amongst them, and I have I also reflect also on what it was like to talk to Christ. I mean, because Christ showed, that they showed, the Trinity showed me what to do. And Christ had uh, the most loving and kind voice I've ever heard. At the same time, you could tell that that voice had, 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 had steel in it, too. So the question is, have things improved in 45 years since you first were out there? Yeah, I think one of the, one of the, well, you, you have a black person in the United States, are you kidding? I mean, I think that's what Kennedy had so much in, in mind when he, I thought, I thought he was going to nominate uh, somebody like Chris Dodd. Uh, but Kennedy, that, that family must have caught a hell of a lot of crop, boy. Uh, why? Well, I mean, what the hell? They, they were looked upon as, as just turncoats by many whites. Here's his family uh, st standing up for uh, blacks. I mean, blacks were, were, were supposed to be used, and they weren't considered, they were considered animals by a lot of people. I had a, uh, I had a, uh, a relative who was a city cop in Hartford, and uh, and he used to direct traffic in downtown Hartford and so forth. And uh, but he was the most racist guy I ever I ever heard over at the house. Uh, and just and he, he just and he and he and he was a good looking guy, and he, and that went to his head too. As you know, a prophet is not supposed to have any honor. In his home territory, as it was taught. But looking back on it, I think I've done pretty good, considering, because uh, I I I I got my fellowship out of out of, out of the people I was helping. I mean, that, they weren't just people I was helping; they were friends. So my question is: When I say have things improved? In the last 45 years that you worked to have access to the beach for, for all people, not only minorities, have things improved? Do you see a better world? Well, the hardest thing in dealing with the beach question is the shortness of the seasons. 
in, in, in a place like New England. You have two months, and then and then Labor Day, everybody clears out, and it's and people don't loosen up. I mean, they just it, uh, the uh, plus New England. It, it, the roots in New England are are are, are cold roots. Um, the uh, yeah, the the very hard. A lot of people in New England are very hard on themselves. They don't laugh. They don't, don't don't enjoy life. I know your mission isn't over, but to this point, at seventy eight years old. Well, see, that's another thing. It's you are. If you're religious, you realize that your age depends on when God calls you. Mm -hmm. And the main thing you better be is be ready all the time. Mm -hmm. But not not to be thinking in terms of I'm 70 or 80. Or it's, how, it's how alive your spirit is. My mission is, is heaven. And, uh, and, uh, and the things of this world are, are just things that... that I, I take with a sense of prudence. Uh, heaven is my goal, and 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 the thing that makes you really think more about it is heaven. It's a study of the scriptures and the gospels about Christ, and also particularly to study Saint Paul. Yeah, why did you take this on? You know, fighting for these people. My father. Uh, also worked in a post office, and he had good relations with with, with black people. Plus, I think my father, now as I look by, uh, he did a lot of fighting for him. And my father, and they knew it. They said, "You know, Dad Cole will fight for you." Mm -hmm. and, what did your dad do? Well, I, my father, as my father fought for the underdog. I learned that from from my dad. Plus, my cousin was the president of Ireland, uh, Eamon de Valera, and I'm named after him. And uh, but he would have been hung by the British, uh, except that he was born in the United States. And my grandfather from Washington, Connecticut, went to President Wilson. And de Valera was saved, his life was saved by the fact that he was an American citizen. So you did this, you think, in honor of your dad, too? No, I, he was fighting well, or? partly my dad. I think the main thing, my Jesuit education had an effect. Yeah. My Fairfield education, of, I mean, that taught what Christ was supposed to be. And, but, and at the same time, you know, I had experiences at Fairfield where, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of people came from areas like Brooklyn and so forth and the Jesuit prep school. But a lot of them were, were, were basically, uh, or a number of them were basically yuppies. But I found the, the people at Fairfield who, were, who took seriously the, uh, their religion you, you realize where they came from. They must have come from good parents. You live here in Bark Hampstead, so close to Winstead, where another icon, uh, an activist, grew Nader. up, uh, Ralph Nader. And his influence on you or how you view him and his life, is there any parallels between your two lives? We know, you know, we've never met. And, but I have, a, obviously, I have a respect for Seven think how many lives he saved. Plus the fact he took flack from people, had to take flack from the establishment. And and I often say say, say to myself, well, if, he, if somebody like him can do it, so can I. You have to be willing. I guess the thing is, one expression I used to use a lot, John, sometime in this kind of work, you got to be around people that know. And that means other activists who you can kid with and joke about. And, and, and because they know. Because uh, uh, it's just like a good priest uh, knows what another good priest is about. 
to I, I don't know if I talked about it, it was called The Laughing Christ. And it talked about Christ's sense of humor. And how he, you know, he, he basically said, you know, he, he told Peter, you know, that they're all going to sell him out. And then Peter, of course, denied it and all that. And then he went and did it. Well, where's the humor in that? Well, well, the humor in that is is is, is the uh, is that Christ was wasn't afraid to say to his own people, uh, you know, when the chips are down, you aren't going to be with me. Do you feel like you've had support in your mission and what you've done in your life? Uh, there is a fellowship among uh, real good actors. See, the same sensitivity you have about whether somebody is, is a phony, and I get spot a phony pretty quick. And I, I don't usually say it much to them, just let it ride, but, and I can tell somebody who's for real quick too. And one is they look at you. I think there's a lot of, like you're looking at me right now, that's good, you're looking. Your eyes are the window of the soul. A lot of truth to that. The best way to scare somebody around Hartford is to say hello. Uh, hello. And they're brought up with that. The insurance company says it has that effect. The whole emphasis is on play it safe, uh, don't make any waves, and we'll take care of you. And that's why they have things like Mother Travelers. Mother Travelers will take care of you. It will give you a... Uh, a, a maximum of security and a minimum of salary. Uh, but the, uh, and also, you see the, uh, what, the, the, I have a lot of respect for a true good union. union. You know, among a real good union, union, there is a fellowship among its members. Uh, there's not a, there's not a union in one of the insurance companies in, in America, I think. <laughs> I mean, they, they, uh, the whole thing is not to me. I had one expression, uh, I think I, I told John about it. So when Kennedy died, the following Monday, the Phoenix Mutual Insurance Company was going to open. And I was a junior executive in that insurance company, right? Just a young guy out of college. And the whole, the boss came into my office when the word came out that Kennedy was dead. And, and the boss was a former naval man by the name of Gordon Harper. And he was a, he, you know, he was used to telling people in, uh, under him in the Navy, you know, orders, and they had to follow it. But he came in at my office after Kennedy died or was assassinated. Well, everybody in the insurance company, the workers, were crying. And this guy comes in my office and says, my boss, he says, and, they, and the Phoenix was supposed to open that Monday, the boat building in Hartford. He says, send out the telegram, he's dead. And that meant they had to cancel the opening because that was the day of Kennedy's funeral. What politician stands out in your mind as doing the most for Hartford or Connecticut? Well, one, of, one politician who grew was Carbone. Uh, because Carbone... Carbone was very anti-black. Nick start, Carbone. Yeah, to start with. And then he, uh, he then he started reading more and stuff, and, and he realized it wasn't the blacks, it wasn't the poor who were the problems. It was it was the establishment on top. And he read a lot about Saul Linsky, I think. Uh, Saul Alinsky, the Chicago activist? Yeah. He learned a lot about him in his book, Rules for Radicals. And, and I think of a, 
The difference between uh, me, say Alinsky w will point out how evil the people on top are. Uh, I, I don't feel that way. Uh, I feel, and it's really helped me, because if I felt everybody on the top was evil, I, I would become as cynical as they are. I'd become a cynic. And once you're a cynic, and once you're a cynic, you don't have, you don't have hope. And hope is the fuel of social action. But I know you're on the same wavelength as, as me, mm -hmm. uh, and you and you you've also been able to handle adversity in your life. Mm -hmm. Also, I think of you a lot, John, when 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 a lot of times when I'm eating, because I remember you saying to me with a grin one day, "Boy, do I love to eat." <laughs> and, and, and 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 food in the mur is a miracle in itself. But I also find out when I'm alone, I got to make it a point to you don't eat as much as you get older, but you better make sure you keep on eating and, and watch out for your health. Uh, and, and just, and, and the, and the whole thing basically I, I've just learned to 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 live life with with with, with vibrance. You better live life. And the other thing and I for example, I'll go very contrary to a, a saying that that you hear it's the saying, Well, you only go around once, you know you go around twice. But what most people don't have, I find that most people don't have any real knowledge of the Gospels. Uh, one of the things that, uh, and of St. Paul. So that was the Ned Cole from a few months ago. But the Ned Cole from today, November 10th, 2018, is feeling what? Is viewing life in what way? Well, basically, it's essentially God activism and my calling as a prophet. Uh, the person who would vouch best on this is Father Jacobs, who blessed the shrine. And the shrine is we it's did all so your 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 home, the house, the yard. I mean, what can people get from this? Is what I'm asking. What 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 do you want them to come here? And, and do or see or feel? Well, uh, that's a matter of faith in the sense that I believe a miracle has happened to me and and I'm curious what will happen when people come out here and pray at a blessed shrine or somebody who, uh, who who's recipient of having his house blessed. Uh, I, I think that there, uh, there's possibility some real, real miracles will happen. I think it's a miracle that uh, somebody uh, walked six thousand miles uh, just like that. I mean, in in the six thousand miles, are when you walked that length of. That was after I got my first operation mm -hmm. on Pentecost, wow. nineteen ninety. Well, now I saw visions in that uh, in that apparition. And some of it's coming true. And uh, and some of my family is involved. My daughter's in Japan, and she's married to one of the most famous people in Japan, Kenji Azama, who's, who's, uh, who's known for writing music. But also, my son has uh, went over to the Holy Land with the whole purpose that we went to the Holy Land was I was brought up by a father who, who believed very much in, in uh, the ingratitude was the worst sin. So that's a range of your views. What do you want to tell America or people today, people who still support you, who f still feel that uh, you have a, a cause in this fight to make things right, and, uh, and tell them how you can get a hold of you. Where, where can they get yeah. a hold of you? I want to come right out here. Out here is, is in Barking Hempstead. Yeah. Seven and, Cedar Lane. Blessed Catholic Shrine. Bar can and how about a phone number? Can you give them yeah. a phone number? One eight six zero, three seven nine zero five six seven. Okay, and I want to thank you for getting together with us today. Wow. 
My pleasure. Okay.